Uh, I know it's your program, but I've had a couple of emails that I've actually found recently. I tried to start going through and, and gave up, but before I did, uh, from a couple of old friends, and I wanted to, to bring these up because it led me to one wonder if I had told either one of these stories on the, on, I know I've told them in the past. I can't remember if I've told them on a podcast, told them on a tape, told them at a live appearance, whatever. We'll let the, John Fell will know instantly. He'll quote it chapter and verse because he's got the research documents. Uh, but my friend Kevin Wood from Richmond, Virginia, fine, fine member of the cult of Cornette, uh, wanted, to, uh, wanted me to tell a couple of Richmond stories. Have I told you the story about when when Flair and and as a matter of fact, uh, this came to mind uh, because I found when I was going through my files last year, I found my letter of reprimand from the Virginia State Athletic Commission, and I forgot I knew Flair and had gotten an argument. He got a letter. I'd forgotten that I got a letter too at that time. Uh, have I told you this story? Do you remember what I'm talking about? I'm not have sure. I'm new ground here. I'm not sure. Let's hear the story. Well, in 1986, Virginia still had an athletic commission. North uh, North Carolina did not. South Carolina did, but it wasn't as, I won't say stringent, but they weren't as official and snooty as the Virginia Athletic Commission, right? Down there in South Kakalaki. And whenever you, basically, they didn't even send anybody to the spot shows in Virginia, right? It was basically Richmond and Norfolk and Hampton, the big buildings. And I, I, I want to say, yeah, somebody came to Roanoke also. But if it was a smaller town than that, they didn't really send anybody that I recall. But they always had the same guy in Richmond, Virginia. He was this big well, I'll go ahead and say fat, big fat guys, I remember. And again, you know, the athletic commission and inspectors and appointees in most of the states were always, you know, political appointments on a local or state level where it's a friend of so-and-so that's a fan of the boxing or the wrestling or whatever. But this guy was just kind of mope faces sat in a corner. And then they had another doctor that did the the classic State Athletic Commission examination of by a doctor in those days was you would sit down in front of him, he'd take your blood pressure and, and look at you. And if apparently, if you were breathing and had a blood pressure that wasn't in need of an ambulance, you got approved. And that was the examination. And of course, everybody had to pay for their licenses and the whole nine yards that we've talked about commissions before. But this was... I don't, it was 1986, I can't remember what month, but it was right when Vince had either announced or right before the publicity was out, it was right before the WWF was going to try to run Richmond for the first time, right? And Flair's sitting there, and he started blistering the commissioner, saying, you know, what the fuck, what, uh, what is the commission doing basically in exchange for, we have to pay you, we have to have licenses. We have to have our blood pressure taken. The promoter has to have a license. The promoter has to give you 5% or whatever percent Virginia took at that time of every show in the goddamn state. And now this guy's coming in to run against us, and he was going to the Richmond Coliseum. If this guy's coming in to run against us. You're not doing anything. Because bear in mind, you know, I'm sorry, but it, at this point in time, this is 40 years ago. Vince McMahon and even the WWF, they may be huge in some places, but they're nobody relative to Crockett Promotions in the state of Virginia. If Vince has run, if he ran a high school uh, spot show in the suburbs of Washington up around Alexandria, that would have been the only time he would have been running you know, any show or paying any tax or doing any business with state of Virginia, right? At that time. But meanwhile, Crockett is not only running, it, it's, it was a tie at that point, I believe, between the Richmond Coliseum and the Norfolk Scope as to what was the largest arena in the state of Virginia and the Hampton Coliseum wasn't far behind and the Roanoke Civic Center seated over 8,000 and 
Crockett was not only running all those buildings monthly or more than monthly, but shows all over the state and between all of that, the, the state was making tens of thousands of dollars in tax revenue on a, you know, on a monthly basis, probably at that point, if Crockett's doing in 86, we did several six figure houses in Richmond and Norfolk. If state gets 5% of that, do the, do the math, right? It's a lot of fucking money. So Flair's got a point. What the fuck are you doing for us? Besides coming in here and having his doctor take our blood pressure. And the fucking guy got lippy back with Flair, and by now I'm sitting there listening to it, but by now Flair stirred me up, and I'm like, yeah, he's fucking right. What the fuck? Well, now he's not only got to hear it from the biggest star in the territory and the world champion, but the lippy fucking manager half his age, and he gets hot and storms out. And uh, they sent to Crockett's office letters of official reprimand from the Virginia Athletic Commission for talking to one of their representatives in a uh, disrespectful manner or whatever. I'll find it and maybe and read it on a future program. You better. That sounds awesome. And then, and there was one night real quick, and I can't remember all the details because I, this I didn't see, but we're sitting in the locker room again in Richmond, and J.J. and Arn had been in the ring. I think we were shooting TV, but uh, we're getting ready for whatever we're doing, right? J.J. and Arn had been in the ring some kind of way, and they were fucking with Dusty at this point or whatever the fuck they were doing. And some fan, some guy had hit the ring on them to get in the heat on, you know, doing whatever they were doing. And I just remember the door busts open, and Arn comes in with his fucking hand. God damn it, Jesus Christ. And J.J.'s like, I couldn't fucking see <laughs> They had, but JJ and Arn had both gone to get the guy, and JJ is wearing his manager suit, right? So he's got the nice, and he's got the nice dress shoes on with the leather soles and the pointy toes and and etc. And as they'd gone in their own specific ways to get this guy, JJ had tried to kick him in the face, right? As Arn grabbed him to stick his fingers in his eye, and JJ kicked Arn's hand and broke his finger. So it was, it was a, it was fucking friendly fire, right? It was <laughs> but that was Richmond, Virginia, just in, in the old days. How far was that the, well, I mean, I guess you had Baltimore. So I was gonna say, was that the furthest North town you went to for Crockett promotions, but you would have had that they had already, time going further. Yeah. yeah. They, they had already opened Baltimore, but think about this. Um, so Richmond to Washington, D.C. is, depending on which spot, 90 or 100 miles, as I recall, isn't it? Do you know? I wouldn't know. I've not done that You've not. You've no. not. But uh, it's, you know, at Richmond, you go right up 95 and you're going to fucking Washington. Uh, I think it's 95. Well, never. it's been a while since I've done it. But Crockett was drawing. I do know that Richmond and Norfolk were about 90 miles apart. Norfolk is to the on the coast to the far east of Richmond in the state of Virginia. So the point is Crockett at one point uh, in that period was drawing 10 to 12, sometimes sell out 13,000 people in Baltimore, which is right above Washington. You go down two, two hours down the road to Richmond, he's drawing 10, 12, 13,000 people in the Richmond Coliseum and 10, 12, whatever thousand people in the Norfolk Scope. In that triangle there, that was an amazing wrestling area at that time. And then he would run Hampton, the Hampton Coliseum, and sometimes, you know, usually 5,000, but the, for the bash, it would sell out. And Hampton is in between Richmond and Norfolk. So it's <laughs> it was fucking ridiculous. The amount of people and the, the uh, repetition we got. Well, as they say, Virginia is for lovers, and I'd love if we moved on from uh, Richmond. 